the custom ZBrush interface, but basically everything I'm going to show you guys will be still pretty plainly visible in the default interface. And um, also, uh, you know, it's basically you'll be able to follow along no matter what setup you have. So uh, I will explain a little bit about ZBrush just to kind of give a background. Um, ZBrush, I believe, sort of started like this almost like 2D drawing program. So if you if you notice the first brush, the very, very first brush is this thing called like a simple brush. And there's sort of a different kind of categories. So there's things like, um, I'll kind of just stick with the, the, maybe the depth or bump brush, I guess. But if you take a look, it's sort of like a brush stroke and it has some sort of shading information in it, right? So uh, to draw is just to left click and drag or to hold your uh, tablet pen down and drag, right? And so it sort of started off this way. And what's kind of amazing and powerful and weird about ZBrush is that the interface is actually just this document space. And this document space, it literally is just like a JPEG or a PSD. So uh, if you take a look, uh, the, the viewport, instead of it being kind of like this um, open viewport, right? It's actually a document. So if we maybe do half the resolution and I'll just uh, adjust this so you guys can sort of see this, right? This is the actual document. So um, I'll just make a new document that is gonna fit to the size. We'll come back to these settings in a, in a few minutes. Um, save as startup there. So what's kind of weird is like if you drag out a mesh, it's actually treating the mesh almost like a Photoshop brush. It's just like, like having a custom Photoshop ABR brush, right? And what's kind of cool about it is you can kind of drag these mesh objects out and they sort of pick up the surface of the old mesh. So it's almost like a normal map operation in here where there's some sort of color coding in the document space. And um, yeah, I'll come back to that in a minute. So uh, yeah, let's just go to a new document. So the idea is that, yeah, for every pixel inside a ZBrush, there's actually a whole bunch behind it that shade for depth. Uh, it's a grayscale depth system, which is actually similar to a rendering technique called Z-Depth. So each pixel in the, the ZBrush document, they call it a pixel, P-I-X-O-L. And so the pixel, right, is the power behind ZBrush. So that's, it was like one of the first softwares that a lot of people to then push hundreds of thousands and millions of polys on their on their on their systems because of this really weird way of rendering 3d space um, now you can't actually edit the mesh at all right you're just using it like a brush stroke so that includes even if i go in if i had um i don't know this dog for example um and if i if i drag it out uh sorry i'm going to just turn this off so you can sort of see this if i drag this out you can sort of see right it's just kind of dragging copies of it onto the canvas so what somebody sort of figured out and the way i i kind of got zbrush to work for me in my mind is that imagine photoshop exists right and but instead of you know doing digital painting and blah 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 you spend 95 percent of your time making a custom brush that's essentially what zbrush is sort of set up like it's a little weird it's a little crazy but it works in, in a strange way so the idea is this that the last you know when you drag out a mesh like this by the way to click on a mesh and to access it you have to click on on the large tool button on the right side this by the way is common to every zbrush interface the tool button and you've got a bunch of preset meshes so you can drag out let's say a sphere right and what's happening is this is sort of like a live mesh right now but we can't directly rotate or edit or sculpt it so we have to go in and hit the edit button in zebra so i've got it in the upper left corner and you see i can now rotate around it uh, if i hit f which will frame it like like maya hitting f will frame it and if you want to kind of clear all the extra clutter in the background hit Control n so for me, the kind of typical operation when I start ZBrush is um, I'm going to reset this palette. The palette, by the way, is kind of like your most recently used and access brushes or files, basically. But usually when I start up ZBrush, it's blank. So I'll, I almost always often start with a sphere, but you might do something with a cube or whatever. So you pick your kind of mesh, right? And if you're dragging out copies, um, I think this is more of an older ZBrush problem. I think the new new zbrush doesn't doesn't do this like 2018 used to where you have this problem but sometimes maybe you hit uh, the t key by accident and you turn off edit mode you can just simply hit 
the edit button, your last stroke becomes live and rotatable and editable in 3D. You, I usually hit F to frame it and Control N to, um, to be able to basically move around. So that brings up another kind of important operation. To, dra to move around in 3D space, uh, you left click and drag off the model. So you can see that in my little kind of uh, mouse shortcut showing up. The, the orange left mouse key is showing you that. Okay, so it's just, um, again, making sure you have edit mode on. So you drag out a mesh, a sphere, a cube, whatever. Make sure edit the edit button is on and highlighted in orange. And then you can left click and drag around. Um, usually to get a sense of space and where I am, I will turn on the floor, which shows you kind of like a home grid in Maya where you're oriented in space. So that's the, the floor. And I also will often activate. So if you hover your mouse over the mesh, right, you'll see a little red dot and a couple red circles. If you hit X, that will activate symmetry modes. You'll usually see two red dots. And that kind of shows you like the center line of the mesh, which is usually important for sculpting. So this is the first barrier to sculpting, I would say, uh, is the interface a bit, you know, getting that edit button on. The second one is actually this. When you click on this, it says to enable sculpting, please convert this 3D primitive uh, to a poly mesh uh, by pressing the make poly mesh button in the tool palette. So the make poly mesh button, just to show you, is over here on the right side. It's this button here. That will allow you to actually sculpt and customize the mesh. Uh, one f note before I actually get into that is that, um, you know, before you do that, there's an initialize panel. And this is kind of like the uh, channel box in Maya where you can say, oh, you know, I want less polys on this thing to start. So I'm going to actually take the divisions down a little bit. You know, or you can kind of alter the mesh in some way or, or make it maybe non-proportional or turn it into like a wedge slice like this, for example. So you've kind of got some mathematical sliders that allow you to make very basic uh, fundamental changes to the quote unquote primitive. But again, if you click on it, you can't sculpt. So the way around that or, or the way to get through that is to always say make poly mesh. Usually you click it once and then you're ready to keep sculpting from that point on. So as I mentioned, you know, once you're you've clicked on make poly mesh 3D, this thing is now <clears throat> sculptable. So you can actually draw on the surface. So I'm going to just show you with a large brush, right? So now you can kind of drag, click, left clicking and dragging on the model allows you to draw, but left click and drag off the model is just a simple model rotation. Um, now there is, I'll explain something else. There's a bit of a weird shortcut. You hold alt and if you left click and drag, you pan the screen or the mesh, I should say, left to right, up and down. That's, it's not zooming in or out or rotating, but if you want to zoom, you have to hold alt then left click or put your pen down. When I say left click, it's the same thing as putting your pen down on the tablet screen. So just keep that in mind. I'll probably use them interchangeably. Uh, but when you let go of alt, now you can zoom. So it's alt, hold left, let go of alt, and then move the mouse up and down. So that's a zoom function. And again, I can alt, left click, and drag to reposition. That's also interesting too. There's kind of this thing called the right click army. <laughs> so this was the original shortcuts is basically using the left mouse button for almost everything. And so if you're really zoomed in, you have to, you can hold alt left click, uh, sorry, alt left click, then let go of alt to zoom back out from the border screen. Okay. So the, the outer border is always a safe zone for that without sculpting. So I can sculpt, zoom in, right. And then I can alt left click and drag zoom out or hit F to, to frame back out. But there is, uh, it's kind of a joke amongst the ZBrush community. It came along, uh, I think, pretty early on, but you can actually right click to rotate. So if you have your, I think by default, your mouse has, the, um, when you put your mouse down, it's like a left click. And when you, one of the two buttons, I think on the Wacom pen for sure is a right click button. So you can actually right click rotate directly on the surface. So if you don't want to, you know, um, let's say you're really focused on sculpting this area and you're doing something, blah, blah, blah. Well, then you can right click to rotate around it. And as mentioned, you can control right click and drag zoom. So yeah, there's been a kind of a, a little bit of a joke in the ZBrush community that are, are you part of the right click army? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a, for me, I, I'm more of a left click person, but uh, so that's a, like I said, a fundamental difference, at least with the left click off versus on. So left click off the model is to click and drag. Uh, and rotate. Alt, left click or pen down, and then let going of Alt and zooming in and out. And then usually I'll I'll hit F to frame.
Yeah, you may not see the borders, by the way. So if your document is too large or too small, what I usually recommend in your initial setup is to actually go into new document and it's it's set to this, which is W size, which is auto fit window size. So that means whatever uh, whatever empty spaces inside of the interface, that will be your new document size. So I usually will go new document. I also don't like the gray this grayscale kind of background so it's usually set i think by default to like a 0.5 so i'll set the the back range to zero and then what you can do is say uh save as startup document so every time you launch zbrush you're going to have the the maximum workspace in pixel resolution available on your screen in resolution um so yes going back to this let's just drag this back out so when you drag something out keep in mind right i cleared the canvas i made a new document i drag something out I have to activate edit to actually get back into sculpting. Okay. If I have something left over in the background, like this little dot control N is the shortcut or you go document uh, new document. So new document will clear out uh, whatever. And then you have to, if you have a brand new document like this, you'll have to go back into edit mode if it's off. So like I said, that's a key difference is um, right. Left clicking and dragging over the mesh is your sculpting. Okay. If you have a tablet pen, Wacom, XP pen, which is a decent, cheap alternative, uh, Huion, which is really quickly becoming uh, an affordable Wacom alternative, also quite good. Um, I use S a lot. So S is your draw size. So that is the size of the of the uh, brush. Uh, sorry, before I go ahead with that, if you, if you left click and drag to rotate or if you're right clicking and dragging and you hold shift, it'll actually sort of snap almost to like a Maya style front view, side view, top view, back view. So I use this one a lot as well, just to kind of get a good sense of uh, the, the object. Uh, one other thing that would be important to mention is perspective. So again, Maya has orthographic, meaning non-perspective distorted views, which can sometimes be good for lining up mechanical drawings, uh, cartoon turnarounds when you're designing a character. So sometimes when I do some of that early layout work, I will turn off perspective but then you want to look at the model in some sense of realistic perspective so it's i think important to turn this on early on and there may be cases where you turn it off and on to match it to like i said mechanical technical drawings um so it just kind of adds a little bit more realistic first person real world perspective to the to the view of the model so getting back to the sculpting i use s a lot i, I have this thing going all the time changing brush size all right, and if we click and drag, it's just a, a brush stroke. If you hold Alt, Alt is almost always an inverse function. So if the brush is pulling out, Alt will make it pu uh, push in. And if you hold S, S, if you take a look, when you hold S, it actually is activating a different brush, which is a smooth brush. So, so this will smooth out your, your mesh, All right? So you can kind of blend things in a certain way if you want. And as a final step, there's something called control. Control is basically a masking tool. So let's say you want to protect a certain area. And now I can sculpt out around that area. And let's say do some smoothing. So I'm holding shift and then sculpting again and shift. Let's say I want to do something different. I'm going to hold control and left click or mouse, uh, sorry, uh, control pen tap off of this. Control click or control tap off of this we'll flip the mask around. And so now I can maybe holding alt, you know, I'll do, put some grooves in here. So you can actually kind of protect certain areas, right? Um, and then control click and drag off the model will uh, demask. So again, when you hold control, it's actually activating uh, a separate category of brushes, right? So when you hold shift, it's actually, actually activating the um, smoothing category of brushes and one in particular. When you hold control, it's activating the mask pen brush. And there's actually a whole subcategory or category of mask pens and mask brushes. Um, and if you control click and drag off the model, you can actually mask kind of like with a with a, a rectangle, let's say, a rectangle shape. And again, you can control tap and flip that around or control click and drag. And lastly, we have uh, control alt, control alt, uh, sorry, shift uh, control. Shift control activates select rectangle, which is basically like uh, a visibility brush within a visibility brush category. And if you control shift click over a section, it'll make that section visible and the other invisible. Control shift left click off, like the control click off 
flips the uh, sorry on the control shift click on the model will flip the visibility around so you can kind of keep one side or the other visible somewhat similar to the control click off the model for masking which flips the mask back and forth and then of course control shift click and drag off of the mesh will uh control shift click off the mesh will unhide everything now i kind of alluded to the fact i won't get into it too much just yet but if you hold control shift you see there's um there's actually a whole bunch of other styles of brushes within this category. If you hold control and you click on the mask pen brush, you see there's actually mask circle, mask line, mask lasso, mask square. And if you hold shift and you click on the shift brush, there's, um, there's actually a ton of brushes that are going to pop up, but there's more smoothing brushes out there. I'll just mention that. So that's uh, sort of a basic intro, I guess, a very, very brief intro into sort of the, the preliminary basic functions of ZBrush.